Okay, first thing we're gonna do to get uh, a UI picker view on here is add some delegate methods to the class. And if you just go up here and you just put a little comma after messages at view controller, uh, and then write UIP, it should fill in here the uh, UI picker view delegate and UI picker view data source. So this class is now gonna be responsible for kind of handling a picker view essentially. And uh, let's go ahead and just declare uh, up top here a variable for our UI picker view. And we're just gonna write over here equals UI uh, picker view. And of course that just means that we can now refer to it uh, in any one of our functions. We haven't, uh, of course, haven't really set it up yet. We'll do that uh, in just a moment. But uh, you, you'll notice that you're gonna get these errors until you basically make this class deal with having a picker view in here and uh, there's just a couple functions we need to add in and uh, let's do this over here um, you know if you do end up making a really kind of a, if you write a lot of code you might want to throw in here a little mark statement says uh, you know handle picker view or something like that and then you can just pull down from over here and you you know get a little a little bold indicator and you know us programmers do all sorts of tricks you know as the file keeps getting bigger to kind of notice those things so you might even want to do something like that you can see all those equal signs in there so anyway um uh, first one's gonna be funk and then uh number of components and you'll notice that that you know kind of autofilled itself in there so this, is, this isn't really a function that i'm coming up with it's it's one meant for handling a uh, picker view and what it wants from us is the number of components or, or basically columns in our uh, picker view and the one i showed you in the last video just had one and uh, for right now let's just deal with one we will deal with uh, multiple ones in a little bit but uh you know it, you can put in here any number you want so uh but again, one is easiest for right now. And then the other absolutely essential one that we need to throw in here is going to be uh, funk picker view. And then this is the number of rows in component. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. It just wants to know all right, how many columns am I showing or components and how many rows do they have? And again, just for right now, let's just go ahead and throw in here one. Uh, so when we you know, test this in just a moment, we can kind of see uh, what's happening there. Now, uh, the... Uh, one kind of odd thing about these um, message apps is that uh, they don't right away recognize uh, that the uh, the screen size isn't the sort of full size that you would think, or, or basically it thinks it's the full size of like the screen, uh, but uh, but really it's getting kind of compressed down and it's like ca compact a little view, you know, as part of your app drawer. So uh, one way we can get around that is to um, schedule a timer just as soon as our uh, view did load statement loads up here. So we're just going to write over here, timer that schedule timer with a time interval. Uh, we want the one that is let's go with this one target. All right, time interval. Let's see if we fill this in right. We can put in here, uh, so it's a third of a second, basically. The target is going to be self, so it means that the selector that we choose to run here, or basically the function name, is in this class, a selector. And then I'm going to write here self .add intro picker, and that's the function name that I haven't yet written. Uh, user info, we don't need to pass any uh, info into this, so it's going to be nil, and then repeats is going to be false. So we're going to get a little error until I actually put in here this function. So func add intro picker, and there you go. It uh, should silence that uh, little complaint. And from here, we can set up our intro picker. So we're going to put in here self .intro picker, and actually come to the I don't even have to write self on this one, do I? At least I don't think I do. Uh, intro picker dot delegate is going to equal self. There we go. Uh, so basically, we're just kind of tying together now these delegate methods and intro picker dot it delegate is this class, right? Uh, and then we're going to set up the frame for this. So that's going to be intro picker dot frame is going to equal cg rect and let's just uh, make this pretty simple for right now. We're just going to say X is going to be uh, zero. All right. Uh, y is going to be zero. The width is going to be self dot view dot bounds dot width. And then it's the height that was the kind of tricky one. So we're going to put it here self dot view that bounds well it's not going to be tricky now it's, it's going to know based on this timer that uh, we're actually in that compact uh, mode so again just just the full height on that 
And then we need to actually add this uh, to the scene. So we're going to write uh, here self.view. You got to you do a couple things here. If you want to just, uh, well, I'm going to end up with add subview, but uh, you could go with insert subview and then uh, you put in here intro picker at, so you can set an index value for this. Uh, to put it above or below th certain things, or you could um, actually specify those other views with above subview or below subview. Subview, if you wanted to kind of, you know, if you knew exactly where it was supposed to be underneath something. Uh, but uh, we'll just go with add subview because hey, it's the only thing in our scene right now. Intro picker, and then we're gonna put in here intro picker dot uh, background color is gonna equal UI color dot clear. And one other thing you should do is uh, if you haven't already done it. In your uh, main dot, main interface dot storyboard, uh, they'll say a little. It says "Hello World" over here. Just go ahead and delete that, and uh, you now should be ready to run this. But um, you know, we've just established how many components or columns and rows we have, but we haven't um, basically committed to putting anything in there. Okay, but what we should see is. Again, the uh, that was me testing earlier. <laughs> we could put those back in Star Wars titles for uh, uh, for the, uh, the the for the rows. But uh, yeah, <laughs> mysteriously those are gone, and uh, now we're just left with this question mark, which is actually correct because uh, we don't have the function in here yet that uh, you know, establishes the the UI views uh, for what we should be seeing inside of our rows. But good news is that it, you know no, nothing kind of backfired on us uh, over here. So uh, if we want to put in some some kind of quick uh, dummy text inside of there, let's go over here and write var uh, dummy array. So this is going to be an array, and this is going to equal whatever we put inside of here. So again, I'm just going to hard code in some values, and uh, let's see. Can we? Let's put in some Star Wars tiles as fast as possible, right? Uh, new hope. I'm just going to put here Empire and Jedi, right? Okay. Uh, now what we need to do is um, let's stay within our you know our little uh, section for these other uh, functions dealing with the picker, and we're going to put in here funk. Uh, picker view. Uh, this time, what we want is view for row. Okay, so we actually want to show something for these rows. So just click on that, and we should be ready to type the code right inside of there. And uh, we are going to put in here let my label view, and this is just going to be a UI label. Uh, and if you want to stop <laughs> seeing this little complaint over here, put in here return because it basically wants a UI view out of this and uh, a UI label is a subclass of UI view, same with UI image view. Uh, so it could be any of these, uh, you know, those different types. And uh, but let's just go ahead and put in here return my label view. So it's going to return something, and this ends up getting run every for every row that we've got, right? So well, right now we've only got this one row that, that is going to get returned. Uh, but typically, what you would do is tie in something like an array, the count, right? To the number of rows. So now, instead of just returning one, it's returning the number of items that we have inside of our array over here. So we've got four of them. See, three commas separating them, right? Uh, so it's going to return all four. That means that this is going to get run four times. And uh, now what we need to do is just kind of style this a little bit better and actually give the uh, my label view some text. So we're going to say dot text is going to equal our dummy array and then row. And you'll notice that this function kind of came with um, some <laughs> extra information here, right? The actual picker view that we're referring to, you know, so we could say something like if picker view equals intro picker, but we already kind of know that. Um, but most important really is just this, uh, the view for row, and that's telling us which row it's showing right now. So these, um, these begin numbering at zero. So the first time this runs around, it's going to be row zero. And that would correlate to this first item inside of our array, which also begins, you know, kind of counting itself at uh, zero. So that's obviously going to be our, uh, our first thing that shows up, and it will be in order through there. Uh, and we could probably maybe even test it at this point, but let's go ahead and put in here a few more properties that I find absolutely essential anytime I'm showing some text. Uh, adjusts font size to fit width. Set that to be true. That way, if, uh, if your text kind of overruns the available space, it's just going to kind of compress down a little bit. Uh, and then font, you can set this to be a uh, UI font, and then you can put in here the, uh, you know, the name 
Uh, let's just go with something simple that everybody has. How about Arial? And of course your size. So you can set your size in there as well. Uh, 20 and then finally let's put in here a dot text uh, or te yeah, text alignment is going to equal dot center. And a lot of times, you know, if you don't know what, what you can potentially put in here, just put an equal sign, type dot and just see, you know, uh, what comes up. Okay, so at this point, I think we should be able to run it again and get uh, all of those Star Wars movies out of here. Da -da -da, there we go. Look at that. And I think that actually brings us to a really good stopping point uh, in the video as my phone begins to ring. So uh, let's pause this and come back with something else.